Our passage this morning is Luke chapter 7, verses 11 through 17. Soon afterward, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up, touched the bier, and the bearer stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him spread throughout the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. The thought that grabbed me this morning from today's passage was, who do I consider family? In our church, we have a saying, you can only visit once, and after that, you're family. But do we really understand what that means? Throughout history, people have always had to grapple with the needs of the poor, the elderly, and the disabled. In Jesus' day, if you didn't come from a wealthy land-owning family, you worked until you were incapable of working, and then you depended on the assistance of your immediate family. Children were your retirement plan. So when Jesus happened to stumble upon a funeral procession, the grief wasn't limited to the loss of the widow's son. The grief was at the loss of her future. There's no question that the Bible describes not only God's commitment to seeing to the needs of the powerless, widows, orphans, strangers, outcasts, but God's challenge to the powerful to see to it that the needs of the poor are actually met. The prophets who railed against the injustice in their society ultimately blamed their society's downfall not on the military power of their conquerors, but on the internal moral rot and their refusal to address the needs of the powerless. Amos is a great example of such a prophetic word. Woe to those who lie on beds of ivory and stretch themselves out on couches, eat lamb from the flocks and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David invent for themselves instruments of music, who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first of those to go into exile and the revelry of those who stretch themselves out shall pass away. Many would argue that the primary reason that the Christian community was so compelling to the people of the first century was how inclusive they were and how responsive they were to the needs of the powerless, the sick, and the poorest of the poor. Jesus raised the widow's son from the dead. He could do that. But what he couldn't do was immediately change the structure of society so that the poorest of the poor would be able to live with some measure of security and some hope for a better future. I guess that one's up to you and I. Gracious Lord, you've given us this story of the widow whose son is restored to life. Today we pray for all those parents with lost children who have not been restored to life. We pray for widows, for orphans, for the homeless. Help us to show mercy and compassion. Help us to extend our sense of family to include the needy strangers among us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.